Hey everyone, welcome to my how to set up video for Shmup Arch version 5.3. This is an update I just put out last night. And so, not only to celebrate this update and the recent changes, but to also introduce more people to this project I've been working on for a year and a half. I thought it'd be really good to do a refreshed setup video, get everyone up on the same page. There's been a lot of changes, so just to introduce it. Shmup Arch is my own personal version of RetroArch that I have created config files and worked on over the past year and a half. And I remember when I first started this project, I got quite a bit of criticism, at least from a few people, how I was just ripping off RetroArch and trying to brand it and all this kind of thing. When really what it was is that early on, you can even see back in old posts and stuff, I was recommending people to check out RetroArch, especially for this revolutionary run-ahead feature, which I think insanely useful for shmups and improving gameplay and get them to feel like the arcade cabinets and things like that. But when I was trying to help other players out with this emulator, it was so complicated that it almost became like a tech support job trying to get people up and running, helping them figure out all the complicated settings and stuff. So I put Shmup Arch together to just kind of bypass all that and get it to be as close to plug and play as possible of course there's still some setting up that you need to do but it's going to get all the foundations set for you and it's gotten to the point where i've gone in and created very specialized config files on a per game basis for certain games and you know it's definitely up to this point hundreds of hours of tweaking settings and stuff so think of it as just my personal version of retroarch built specifically or tailored specifically for shmups that's going to save you hundreds of hours of configging and tweaking and all those sorts of things. So first thing I want to say is that the only core to use with Shmup Arch is this core right here, Final Burn Neo. This is an update from the older versions of Final Burn Alpha. Alpha is no more. Now it's all about the Neo. It's better. And so I had to update all that stuff. Do not use the main cores with this because they are crappy to say the least. They're really laggy. They don't support save states. They are worse than just using regular MAME. So if you want to play on MAME, use the standalone version, especially with the lag reduction. I have a video on that. But do not, or maybe shmup MAME if you want to go old school. But don't use the MAME cores with this thing. Just stick to Final Burn Neo. And really the only drawback of Shmup Arch is that it doesn't have amazing compatibility, but it has really good compatibility. It can basically play everything that shmup MAME could play and it plays it better so keep that in mind so that's the core to use it's already packaged in this thing you don't need to download or anything like that and so let's start off by going to input that's the first thing we want to configure go ahead and plug in your arcade stick plug in your controller or if you have your keyboard I guess you know just you're already there with your keyboard so we're gonna go and we're gonna start by going down to user one binds and rather than binding all, I found that uh, RetroArch is really good about recognizing controllers. It's probably the best emulator I've ever seen at doing that. And so it probably has a lot of your basic inputs already down. So we're just going to configure them to shmup mame and to shmups. So let's go down to B. So B is your fire button. It's also your confirm button in the menus. So it's your primary button. So whatever primary button you want to config, uh, config that to B. Um, I use the top left button, right, on the arcade stick. So go ahead. Now B is confirm. So we're going to go down Y. Y is your auto fire button, your C button in cave shmups. It's your third button. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and configure that. To me, I put that on the second top row button. But the cave style of doing it is the third top row button. And then the second, they map to bomb. But I don't do it that way. Select, go ahead and map that. That's your credit input as well. Start, go ahead and map that. You know, start the game. Up, down, left, right. Those are probably already done for you. A. A is bomb. And it is also cancel or go back in the menu. So it's kind of swapped over from Nintendo, right? So... Go ahead and configure A. To me, that's the bottom row button, bottom left, bottom row button, your light kick if you're a Street Fighter player. 
That's how I do it. Some people would do that as the uh, second top row button, your medium punch for bomb. You know, that's cave style, but I don't do it that way. And then X is your fourth input in some shmups, like Esperade has four inputs. So your fourth, or Escaluda, that's your fourth input, or Mushi. So, or I think you use four Mushi, I can't remember. Then LR, you can map those if you want. They're usually not necessary, but if you want to map them, you can. And so once you get all those mapped, go ahead and hit back. And now we're going to go to hotkey binds. These are important as well. So fast forward toggle, I leave that as space. I don't really use that. I use fast forward hold though all the time. So to me, I map that to an out of the way button, like your your fourth kick button right on the bottom row. That's where mine is. Just kind of an out of way button that you can still access. Load state, extremely important button. I map that to my third top row button, so my heavy punch. Do not map save state because you don't use it. There's a better way of doing things. So don't bother with a save state button. Pause toggle is interesting because I also map pause to my start button, but that can cause some issues. So I recommend do not map pause to your start button unless you're like a streamer like me and you need to pause your game frequently to talk to streams or whatever. But your menu can also pause buttons. So I don't think you should map pause toggle, but if you do, map it to start. I'll go ahead and take it off there. And then the last one you need to map for sure is menu toggle. Now I know some arcade sticks, especially these days, have menu on the sides, right? And they have like a dedicated menu button. However, I've found in Windows 10, sometimes Windows 10 likes to do silly things with your menu button. If you hit it, like it'll open Steam or open some kind of menu or some crap. So, and you're going to use this button a lot, so I actually map it to a face button. So to me, I map it to the third kick button, the third button on the bottom row, the heavy kick. I recommend mapping it to a face button for sure, so you can just get to it really quickly, because you're going to use it a lot. So go back. So we've got our buttons now set. So now we're going to go, and we're actually going to quit out of RetroArch. And we don't want to quit by hitting escape, because if you hit escape and quit, that does not save your changes. The only way to save your changes in RetroArch, that, or the most reliable way, to me anyway, is to formally quit out by going to this menu, down, quit. So you're going to quit out. It is going to save your changes. That's important to do right away. Don't save it to later because you're going to forget or something. And then you're going to have to remap your buttons. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Also, an interesting note is that if you are in a game, let's say you load the game, then you launch the menu within the game. If you are within a game, it will not save your changes while in game. This is a feature that saves you headaches, but also can cause headaches if you don't understand that. So within the game, you cannot save the changes. So if you want to make a permanent change, you need to do it within the menu. The only other thing I want to show you um, is the on-screen display. So go to on-screen display, go to on-screen overlay. So in 5.3 I've made this really nice scan line overlay that I really like um, default because I feel like people don't know it existed before and so I was like okay, I'm gonna make a default so people most people use it because I'm sure most people want to use it but if you don't want to use it and you want just the you know no scan lines you can just turn it off, and once you turn it off, remember you gotta quit out and save, right? And that'll turn it off permanently. However, since I like it, I'm gonna leave it on, right? So go on-screen overlay, on, okay. So now let's talk about loading games. So to load a game, you go to load content. Um, there is a thing you can do in RetroArch normally where you scan a, fi a folder and then it saves over here somewhere into your library, I can't remember where, I think right here. Yeah, it'll save into your library. The thing about Final Burn Alpha ROMs, and for Shmup Arch, you need to use a Final Burn Alpha ROM set, not MAME, Final Burn Alpha. The thing about Final Burn Alpha ROMs is this feature doesn't seem to work with them very well. It gets some of them, but it doesn't get all of them, and you're not going to get all your games scanned, so I just don't even bother with it. Instead, what I do is I just stick my ROM folder really close to my C folder on my computer. So here's C, right? So you go to load content C, 
and there's my ROM folder. Totally legit ROMs, right? Go to the ROM folder. Go ahead and launch your game. So we're gonna go ahead and launch Garega. Special note about Garega is that there is a special save state for slot zero that I do not recommend overriding. What this save state does is it unlocks all the stuff for you. Because normally it's not unlocked and setting it up is actually kind of complicated and involves putting in codes and it's a pain in the butt. So I've saved you all that effort. There is just a special save state. But you'll also notice, hey, wait a minute. This is, I'm playing in Yoko here and this is Tate. So Tate is on by default because I want to show people that feature exists. So if you want to turn off Tate and play in Yoko, here's what you do. You go to options, you go to vertical mode, and you turn it off. So once you turn it off, it will go into Yoko. It will go horizontal. So there you go. Go ahead and start, hit your credit, pick your ship. I play great. I play gain. And I want to show you how to run the save states and load states real quick, and then we'll move on. So, how to work the save states and load states, let's just do something, okay. So the bomb's going, so we know there. So the way to work the save states is, here's your slot selector right here. This is why you use the menu, because you can quickly switch through slots, which is really nice. And I really like, once you know how to use the save state feature in Shmup Arch, I think it's a lot better than MAME. You just need to know how to do it. So you hit menu, and then it'll pull up what's called the quick menu here. And right here is all your save state stuff. So don't override slot zero, because that's used for the the main uh, menu thing, so don't override that. Instead, go to slot one, save state. So now it's saved, now we're gonna die. And now you have the load state button. You can just load state to your heart's content. Look how nicely that works. Then if you're like, wait a minute, I wanna make a new save state here. Slot over, one, save state. Now we're save state in here. And so on and so forth. And what's cool about Shmup Arch, it has 99 slots. Which sounds ridiculous, but actually is really useful if you play a chaining game like Donanpachi. I used up all 99 slots. So you can just make another save state. But then you're like, hey, wait a minute. No, I didn't want to do that. I want to go back. Menu. Let's go back to slot one. Now we're back to slot one. So you can really quickly navigate through your save states with this. It's I love it. So then we can go back even to the main menu. So that's how that works. So let's go ahead and close that out. Um, then the other thing I just want to show you is how to set up auto fire and how to set up in-game controls. So the thing about auto fire in Shmup Arch is that it's not really that great. If you want a really dialed in good auto fire I recommend using anti micro and then setting the anti micro key to one of the keys here so let's say I wanted to rapid shot I wanted to use it on Y you'll notice the key because the cool thing about shmup arch is it'll give a key and a controller input to something so the key is a you can swap that you know if you hit something else on the keyboard and the controller is you know my Y button so if you put your turbo and anti-micro to A, then when you hit Y, uh, unbind Y, so unbind it, um, and then uh, when you hit Y, it'll uh, auto-fire. That's the advanced way to do it, but I'm going to show you the in-emulator way to do it. So let's load Gunberg, because that's a perfect example of this. Yeah, if you hit left and right, you, like, speed navigate, by the way, just because that's really helpful. So let's go to Gunbird. I think it was in here. There it is. Yes. And then you can fast forward through the menus and stuff with your fast forward button. Credit. Credit. Start. Here we are. Okay, so the thing about Gunbird is, look, I'm, well, you can't see, but I'm hitting my rapid fire button and nothing's coming out. That's because Gunbird does not actually have a rapid fire button within the game. 
So to create one, this is what you do. So you go to what's called controls, and you notice this is different than options. And this is a really helpful distinction to understand. Controls are within the game controls on a per game basis. Input, the one that we were doing before, is for the entire emulator for all games. It's the general inputs, and controls is the per game inputs. So once you understand that, your life's going to be a lot easier. So we're going to go down and find our Y button. This is the button I want to auto-fire. Notice it's on button 3, so that would normally auto-fire, except Gunbird does not have a button 3. It only has buttons 1 and 2. So how you do this is you're going to set it to button 1, and then save game remap file. So now it is going to act like button 1, as you'll see. So, the way button 1 works is if you hold it, turbo shots until you have meter, then it charges like this. But I don't want it to charge, I just want it to auto fire at all times. So here's what you can do. You go to input now. Well, you go to input, and you go to hop, uh, user 1 binds, then press up, the bottom option is turbo. I always recommend setting turbo within game and not in the main menu at the start because if you do it in the main menu at the start it'll always be on and you don't want it always on I think you always need to turn it on per game so go ahead map turbo to the third button and then resume and now we have a true turbo the thing about retroarch that's important to explain is that its turbo feature is kinda of funky where if you're holding the turbo button, every other button gets turboed as well until you release it. So, the the practicality of that means if you want to, say, switch over and start charging, you can't hold both buttons at once because it'll just be both of them turboed. So you have to release the auto fire and then re-hit the button. Then you can uh, charge. See, like that? Or I guess you hear it like that. So that's how that works and then you can get the charge. Um, one other thing I want to mention is if you're playing the game and you're noticing it's jittery or maybe you want to chop down more lag, um, the philosophy between the lag settings is that I have made them as close to PCB as possible. So a lot of them are going to be very close to PCB and I've also factored in smoothness and just general great playability. So some of these games you can chop a little more out of, like Grega, you could, it's three frames of input lag to match the Saturn version, but you could chop it down to one, it just kind of gets a little, a little funky when you do that. But if you want to change the latency, here's what you do, so you go down to latency, leave that alone, and the run ahead frames. As you increase this, it'll chop more lag out. And the important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of games, like Gunbird here, the max you can chop out of it is one frame just by the configuration and so if you start chopping more out of it it starts to act funky it doesn't actually play faster there's no such thing as zero frames one is as low as you go so I wouldn't mess with that unless you are convinced you need to change it and then the other thing is if you feel like your game is being juddery or weird frame delay could be the issue where frame delay cuts out more lag but, um, if your computer isn't powerful enough, it will cause some juddering and stuff. And so, you can just set that to zero if you're getting any of that sort of problem. And the max I recommend is 10, because beyond 10, it can get weird. Like 11 onward, it can go up to 6, 15. That's not really giving you much more benefit, and it usually causes funkiness within games. So 10 is kind of the default uh, you can even drop it down to 7 if you feel like 10 is kind of pushing it. And then if it's giving you any more issues, just drop it down to 0. So let's say you needed to do that. So drop it down to 0. And then you go to Overrides. Save Game Overrides. Once you do that, that changes the setting forever. I don't want to do that here, so I'm just going to put it back. But, uh, yeah, so that's how you fix that if you need issues. If you have any issues there. And so that's pretty much it. That's how you set it up. That's how you run it. Um, and then, let's say you want to jump back into a game, like uh, me and Dodonpachi where I played almost every day. 
I'll show you how to do that real quick. I didn't mean to close out the entire emulator there. But if you go over here, it has your history. Or it should. There, yeah, there's your history. So you can just relaunch it. There you go. And you're back in the game. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And before I go, I'll go ahead and name my patrons. Dingo, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Brian Shiver, Double Vision, Depths 20XX, Dunpill 2064, EC 2151, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Gus, Kiwi, Jacob Spring, Jake Ryan, Joe Angelo, John, K, Quentin, Mark Sloan, Maz, Nathaniel Davis, N Electron, Okla Kugels, Ohm Call, Rhysosis, Sagumo, Young Money Sui, Plasmo, and Yutakaya. Thanks for watching.